perfect. So welcome, Bruno Rocha uh, is going to talk about application factory pattern for creating new application systems using Flask, right? Yes, yes. Thank you for, for having me. I, I'll try to share my screen. Thank you. So, um, well, uh, let me present, introduce myself a little quickly. Uh, my name is Bruno Rocha. Uh, I'm R Rocha C. Bruno in Twitter and all the other uh, social networks. I live in Sao Paulo, Brazil. I work as a software engineer on Red Hat, also a member on Python Software Foundation. Right now, I'm one of the maintainers for the Python Planet website and also the fellow working group. Uh, I'm a Twitch partner streamer. Uh, I, I stream twice a week on twitch.tv slash code show. Uh, my content there is mostly around Rust and Python, uh, but most of the content is in Portuguese. I do only once a week in English, but anyway, uh, if he, someone wants to join, see what we are doing there. There's a lot of flash content uh, happening. Uh, and also, uh, curiosity, I also organized a Flask conference in Brazil. I think the first Flask conference in the world was a Flask conf we had in Brazil in 2018. I was one of the organizers. And my talk today is about um, the factory pattern, which is something that um, Flask documentation recommends. I use it a lot. And then I, I realized some different ways of using it and I'm having a bit of success uh, on the latest uh, seven years. Uh, all my applications, all my development is using this pattern, but a little bit different in, in the way that the documentation is uh, recommending us to do. So one of the most common problems, uh, everyone which is starting with Flask is going to heaven is this one. Uh, so uh, the person is going to create a Flask application in a file, let's say called app.py. Uh, and then uh, suddenly he is, th this person is going to try to separate the concerns of the application, uh, not liking everything in the single file. And he's going to put the views, uh, all the, the routes and all the other stuff in a different file. And then when you do that in Flask at, at the first time, you suddenly are going to be catched by this problem, um, which is the circular imports because the first uh, Python model, the app.py, which is the entry point for the plastic application, is going to require the import for views. Um, and then the Python import system works in the top down. So it's going to run the file and read lines one by one to interpret it. And then when it hits this line where it's importing views, it's going to load the second file. And the second file is also loading the app. So you enter in some kind of deadlock when uh, one, one thing depends on another. And that's going to be a huge problem. And there are some ways to fix it. One of the ways to fix it is changing the, the order of the imports. You can uh, have your Flask uh, stuff imported at the top. You do whatever you want to do with the application. And then at the end, you can import your views file because then you make, you, you make a little bit of hack on the Python import system and changing the orders of putting stuff. And then the problem is going to happen, the circular import, but doesn't matter at all for your application, the, the Python import system can get access to that uh, views object anyway. So uh, this is nice, but this is ugly because PEP8 is now crying on you. Uh, PEP8 doesn't like when you do uh, this kind of imports at the end of the file. It's not easier to maintain, especially if you are going to use tools like pre-commit and iSort, which is going to automatically sort your import. You are going to have problems when you try to do this kind of hack. And then that's, I think that's the main reason why the factory pattern exists in Flask. So uh, factory pattern is something that's on the patterns uh, category on the Flask documentation. And the recommendation is that instead of creating the Flask application at the top level of the file, you create a function and the convention is to call the function create app, but you can use any other name you want, but this is a conventional name. And then you do inside the function scope instead of doing everything in the top level. So uh, <clears throat> this is going to be useful because now uh, all the things that happens inside the function is going to happen at the runtime, 
not at the uh, definition time. So uh, you do another kind of hacky to uh, make your imports to be evaluated at the runtime of that function. And then you put all your imports inside the function, as you see in this example here. But again, I think personally, I started not liking to have imports inside functions uh, because it's also not, not a very uh, great recommendation to import stuff inside functions. And I became a little bit pedantic about uh, styling. And then I put all my imports on the top of the file and, and I prefer to use that style. So um, together with the factory pattern, Flask uh, recommends you to use the blueprints. So instead of doing this lots of imports here, you can actually import things uh, outside the function level, but then you need to use blueprints. Blueprints is a way that you can have a template for your application. The blueprint is going to be something that in a declarative way, you declare how you want your application to be in the future. And once you register, uh, all the properties from blueprint is transferred to the application. Then you can fix that problem uh, but it still depends on the blueprint and especially for beginners, people that are starting with Flask, sometimes it's difficult to understand what is a blueprint and how I need and why I need to create it. So um, when, you, when I say factory and uh, when we read factory, um, most of people, um, I, I'm teaching Flask uh, in the classrooms, I think, I started doing that in 2013. So it's seven years uh, trying to um, explain factory in the classroom. And people tend to think that factory is just one function called create app. It's people saying that the factory for Flask is just a function called create app. And actually it's not a single function. So. Factory is not a single function. Factory is a whole way you can be safe uh, against the uh, circular imports and also the out of context problems that is usual to have in Flask. So, uh, and sometimes you need something that's simpler than Blueprint, especially if you are starting uh, learning Flask, maybe you don't wanna grok Blueprint at the beginning and then you are going to start doing things like this. So you can have, still have your application factory uh, function, create app, create our application, and then you can uh, register all your routing system inside that function, in the function level. Uh, and that's that's okay. But again, it's a little bit ugly uh, if we are talking about styling and maintainability and uh, the possibility to do some inspection on the objects. If we use, for example, the inspect model uh, to try to find all the functions, all the views, uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to get something that's declared inside the function. So um, <clears throat> again, this is not something, it's something that's okay, it's going to work, but we have better ways to do that. Um, so another very common mistake is that beginners uh, tries to create app all the time for every views. Uh, if you have multiple views file models and other places, you are going to import that create app and you are going to create multiple instances of app in every file. And then you are registering stuff in wrong instance. You can have an application with multiple instance without Node-C uh, that um, because sometimes it's, it's really difficult to understand all, how to architecture uh, your application uh, because Flask gives you a lot of freedom and that's nice, but came with this responsibility. And then I came with this rule uh, for seven years. I came with this rule for all my Flask application I developed some great, uh, some bigger applications here in Brazil. I helped working on some APIs for the largest job uh, portal in Brazil. Uh, we have applications running there uh, with tons of requests. And then I came with this rule. So the first rule on the Flask Club is that you should never import app. So in your application, I usually I run some scripts on my make file to, to see if in some place, app is going is being imported because app should never be imported from anywhere and later create app. Who is going to use the factory? The factory is going to use be used by the server. So we can have, for example, G Unicorn, we can have U uh, Micro uh, Whiskey, we can have other servers importing on, on, on when it's starting your application, but inside your application uh, logic, you should never import app 
because it's going to lead you to problems like circular imports and other stuff. Um, so then I came with this pattern, which I call it pipeline pattern. Uh, so um, as it's a factory, we are now talking about what's happening inside the factory. So inside the factory, we have a pipeline where the first step is create app. So create app is not the whole factory. It's just the first step on the pipeline. It's going to give you a very clean uh, and, and lean Flask application. So after you have it, you start passing this application through other steps on the pipeline. And the other steps can be anything you want uh, at, uh, as long as it's a callable uh, object in Python. So usually we are going to use uh, functions, but for extensions, for example, it's very common to use classes and then uh, override the call for the classes and receive the application on uh, each of those steps of the pipeline. So when you reach the end of the pipeline, you can say your Flask application is ready to enter in the application context, which is when the application is going to be served and ready to uh, receive requests. So how do I implement it in the real life? What I do is uh, in my projects, usually I create a module called X, X uh, because it's, it reminds extension. And in the past, Flask, Flask had in, in, in the point X, which was magical, and I think it has been removed. Uh, but I keep my uh, module called X, but you can call it modules, you can call it extensions, plugins, anything you want, uh, as long as you keep the same pattern inside all the model. So usually I have a config uh, pi model, I have an admin, I have a blueprint, for every extension that I want to inject, to attach to my application, I have a separate file. Instead of putting everything in the app file, for everything, I'm going to create a new file. And on this new file, in this new model, I'm going to do whatever I want, uh, res respecting the uh, Flask context. We have the application context. We have uh, the request context. So you have to keep this in mind when doing this. Uh, and then th in this example, I'm starting Flask Admin, which is a very popular uh, Flask extension. And I'm starting it on a separate file called admin.py. And here I import the admin, not on the main Flask application. And here I start the admin object. Uh, and then I can do all the stuff I need to start to configure this object. And only when I need the app uh, to uh, bound the app to the admin, I create a function called init underscore app. So this function is the entry point for my factory. Uh, and when I say factory, I'm saying the factory for the admin. So for every plugin, I going to have a different factory. So this resembles a little bit, you are going to remind uh, the Flask extensions. The Flask extensions works this way. Uh, the Flask extensions is just a, another Python model with an init app usually a class with an init app uh, method inside it. And I realized that I don't need to create a, an extension. I can create only a new file, a new model. And as long as it has a init app uh, function that receives an app, I can call it an extension and I can attach it to my Flask. So this is how I create uh, Currently, I create my pipeline. So if you see my draw here for the pipeline, everything in, in, in the single step, uh, this is the same I'm doing here in the code. Uh, and I co my convention is to use init app every time. So I know that all my extension is going to have the same pattern. And if I'm using an external extension, it's also going to have the same pattern. So it's going to be easier to maintain uh, and also it's easier to remove. So at, at some point, if I want to change my configuration uh, model, I can just remove this line and replace with a different thing that does uh, this. So every uh, single file like this, every single model should have uh, a very singular responsibility, not putting lots of stuff in, in all the places. And <clears throat> to, this, to do this in an automatic way, because sometimes it's, it's repetition, if you have lots of models, you are going to have lots of uh, init app calls here on your main uh, factory. So uh, to avoid the repetition, what I do actually is I use DynaConf, which is uh, an extension uh, for Flask. DynaConf can be attached to your Flask application. And then DynaConf includes an, a function called load extensions. 
So you can have a settings file in the TOML format or YAML format or any format or JSON, any format you want. And then you can list your extensions in the same way we do in Django and the installed apps on Django, you can do this. And you can do the same thing in Flask on using Dynacon. And then you list your extensions in a settings file uh, separated from the main application and then you use Flask Dynacon to load this. And then your main application, your main Flask file is going to be very lean and easier to maintain because everything is defined on the settings and the settings can be dependent on the environment. So you can have a different settings for production, for testing, uh, for development. And uh, the other nice stuff on this approach is that you can have environment variables, like everything that is prefixed with Flask underscore is going to be loaded by Dynaconf um, as a Flask configuration. So you can export your SQL Alchemy URL using Flask underscore you can export more extensions. You can add extensions using environment variables uh, and then uh, Flask is going to load it because Flask allows us to replace the config class and that's what Dynaconf is doing under the hood. So, and well, that's my idea. So if someone wants to have some examples in my GitHub, which is Russia Seed Bruno, I have lots of Flask applications using this way to organize the files and folders. And I think that's all I have. Uh, thank you, everyone. Any any question? Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Bruno. Thank you. We're just waiting to see if we have any few questions around from the YouTube or the Twitch channel. The question is how do different, how do different environments that stage prod play together with the factory pattern? Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, what I do usually is um, um, it, it works okay because um, I can have, I, I don't have an example on this slide, but I have this example on my uh, GitHub. Um, you can have for, when using Dynaconf, you can have in a single file, you can have sections separated by environment. So you can have in the same settings file, uh, production, development, testing, define it. And then uh, variables can change there and you can compose your default values or your extensions. Uh, and then you can also replace it by environment variables. So at the point where the, the application is started, is created, uh, fabricated by the factory, uh, you are going to load this setting. So uh, it's going to reflect what you have in the settings for that specific environment. So it's going to reflect what you put in your uh, extensions there. And that works fine. For example, in the testing, I can attach some mocking stuff on the on Flask. I can change my database to the, the, to the testing database uh, only using environment variables. And then I ensure that on my CI, for example, I'm using Jenkins. On Jenkins, I can um, have a Flask underscore variable pointing to uh, another extensions list that's going to be merged with the, the, the default extension list. And it's going to inject my mocking uh, for testing, and also it's going to change my uh, database uh, URL and other other kind of stuff uh, only for the testing. So it's playing well, and it all depends on how you write your your settings. Yeah. So I hope this helps. So feel free to reach me also if you have any question or need some example around it. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you very much. Thank you for your talk. That was great.